to Liz via Gosman. Uh, it's kind of a joint project, joint presentation tonight. We also both have many staff members here, so I think most of mine are in uniform. You can see them. How about from Liz's office? We have a few here. Uh, probably see all of us out in the community. So tonight's meeting is our very first meeting about uh, a couple of projects we're very excited about, and that's the public safety facility and the Grand Avenue project to enhance both Grand Avenue and a potential location for our public safety facility that will not only house the police department, but some other departments uh, with the city. We want to begin with welcoming everybody. We're going to get started here, and if we will have some questions and answer time. Tonight's presentation topics, we're going to talk a little bit about the historical background, why we need the space, what led us to this location, uh, the site selection, some of the design work, and then some of the operations that are included in the police department that people may not realize and some of the reasons we need the additional space. The historical background, the current building you're in here tonight is approximately 22,000 square feet. It was built in 1989, 1990 area when, when it began construction in 1989. I believe we moved in in 1990 and a half that summer. The first needs assessment right after this was conducted in 2000. So just a few years later, we determined that we had already outgrown the space and we needed additional space somewhere. And that 2000 assessment determined that we needed approximately 4,000 additional square feet to the building that we're in today. Uh, total, that would bring the total to about 26,000 square feet. A second needs assessment was done and was completed in 2013, indicating that an additional approximately 15,000 square feet for a total of 30, 37,000 square feet would be needed to bring us up to modern technology and uh, proper specs to maintain our CONUS standards. Here's a couple of pictures to show you where we're at today and, and some of the comparisons to other agencies around us. Our roll call room is where our officers begin their shift. That's the picture on your left. You can see that room has a the wall behind it on the right. When we first moved in here, that wall was not even there. That wall was constructed after the fact to give us an additional separation and space to the room behind it. So this is the environment that our officers begin in. And you can see where the comparison to Prince William County, this is their western end district, where it has a board and training area in the front of it as well. Some of you, if you've ever been here for our open house, you've been out back, and as I call it, our Sanford and Son uh, location with the number of sheds that we have out back. Uh, we, currently we have uh, three sheds and one uh, railroad storage facility out there in our impound line. That storage location is approximately 6,000 square feet. We need a warehouse space for our bicycles and special equipment that currently is just kept in a lot more type shed that we have out back as well. We need a secure lot for special vehicle and trailer storage as well. Uh, remember if we have a crime that involves a vehicle, that vehicle is towed as evidence and then that evidence is kept outside in our impound lot which also houses our bicycles, and that's also where our railroad car is We put that in there and an additional shed. So you can start seeing that space starts to collapse down. We don't have the proper room that we need. So we began to do some site selection, and we had a two study that went around the city. What they began to do was look at potential sites for not only most of you know there's a project for a fire station. Um, we wanted them to pick at least a minimum of four locations across the city. Gave them a, a site plan of what we thought we would need and the space we would need. And they began to look at locations that we could either redevelop or vacant land, whether it's privately owned or public land, that we may be able to look at to put these facilities on. At the end of that study in 2013, it was determined that Green Avenue was going to be one of those final four selections. During the assessment process, consideration we wanted to give it to was customer service location, response times, central location for our community, and approximately to downtown or the old town area. We believe that having our public safety facility 
close to our downtown footprint where a lot of traffic is at is important for a community called kind of central location. Options were explored to construct a joint public facility that housed not only the police department, but our city's information technology and potentially fire and rescue administration building. So at the end of the day, when all this came through the filter, we determined that the Grand Avenue site was the best location for us. It's proximity to Old Town, it's connection to the Georgetown South community, and that section of Grand Avenue. Uh, being close to Old Town and involved with our community that puts us right there where everyone can visit us and we can be an actual part of the community. The central location is very important to us. We want to look at the cost. Did we have to, what did we have to pay for the site compared to the other locations that also filtered out in the process. As you can see, the cost estimates right now where we're at is approximately $20 million for it. That did not include the site purchase. Liz will be uh, talking about some of these in more detail when she steps up and uh, picks up where I'm leaving off. So what Dewberry Associates did, they did a conceptual drawing. This picture that you're seeing is the Georgetown South or Grant Avenue Shopping Center. Those of us that have been around for a long time, connected to Georgetown South community, but it's actually called the Grand Avenue Shopping Center. As you can see, this section here is the section that was purchased by the city of Manassas. That is the plot that housed the old Safeway building. Our conceptual design, as you can see, is the main footprint of the building is closer to the road frontage. We want this building to be um, eye-catching and be a prominent part of the community and stand out. The buildings that you see in the back of this is our evidence processing and storage. Evidence and processing takes up a lot of space. As the laws have changed, the longer we, we have to keep our evidence longer. I can tell you that um, one major crime can take up our current entire evidence room. And if those crimes take up sometimes up to three years to get to court, you can tell that in our evidence processing and storage location is tied up for almost three years, potentially with one case, and just overcrowds it. It could impact other cases as well for cross-contamination. It's important that it's probably the highest priority that we get resolved as soon as we can. As you can see, the townhouse community is behind us. To the right would be uh, the Winters Branch location, uh, and then in front of that is Rogers Automotive, and again, Grand Avenue to the front, and there's also a second project for the Grand Avenue enhancements that are on the back table that Liz will speak about further. So what are the operations that we're going to have in this facility? Uh, the City of Manassas Police Department is a total. Uh, right now we're approximately 130 people total with our support personnel. It would include our Emergency Operations Center, which is not only our communications section, but emergency operations, which is mandated by the federal government, is going to be when you have a major catastrophe, you have to put up this centralized emergency operations center. That is currently in this room when we had it, like the 4th of July. We set up emergency operations center in this room. And as an example, this room we just cut up last year it used to extend another doorway down, but we needed additional office space. So now emergency operations center is cut down to about two-thirds of where it was before. Uh, the IT staff for the entire city of Manassas, which is currently housed at the uh, city hall location, we have space needs at city hall as well. So our design is to make one public facility, release some of the pressure at city hall, and realistically the police department and public safety has about 40 percent of the city's IT technology so they would put them right in our house, so to speak. So when we have a communications or EOC or training that needs to be done, our IT division is there as well. One of the components that is still to be determined and that we've talked about is the Fire and Rescue Administration. They are currently in a leased space and that if we build this to a, the capacity that we have growth and extra space, it is an area that we could potentially move Fire and Rescue Administration out of the lease space and make their administration department 
part of the public safety facility as well. Those things will be determined as we continue with the studies and the cost estimates in the design phase. These three pictures just kind of give you a conceptual of what a three to four story building would look like on that site. Uh, you can see the front the top is the front from Grand Avenue. Uh, this picture just takes a three and a half story. One of the things we would look at is the cost estimates. What is the difference between three and a half stories cost versus going ahead and finishing it out and making it the full four stories the whole way? That would give us the extra space for growth in the future or expansion from other departments in the city to move to this location. I think the bottom picture gives a good depiction of not only where the main building would be housed, but this uh, evidence processing and storage location that we housed in the back. So why did we choose that design phase? Is because we don't need a brick and mortar for evidence storage. We need a secure building, a large warehouse style, which is much cheaper to build than brick and mortar. So as Liz and I sat down with the consultants, one of the things we talked about, does this space allow us to reduce our cost by building a more cost-effective building into the rear of the building uh, and help reduce the cost to our citizens? Is. I think this might be some of your slides you may want to talk about. Shopping, shopping center, um, brand new aerial that um, was provided to us by Roger Snyder. So thank you, thank you, Roger. Um, and so the city has purchased the old Safeway site. So those are actually two properties. The shopping center itself, it's actually three properties. Joe's Pizza is a third um, little parcel, if you will. So Joe's Pizza, the shopping center, and then the old, what we call the old Safeway site. And so the city has purchased the old Safeway site. That building will be coming down sometime this summer within the next 45 to 60 days. We'll be taking it down. You are going to just see a cement slab there for a little while while we do the design and the engineering and all the geotech and the different things that we need to do um, to determine where exactly the, the building can be go. So bear with us as the site still looks a little bit um, on the downside until we get things um, cleaned up. The, um, the one thing, the, the thing that I wanted to talk about really was the context of the public safety facility on the entire Grant Avenue um, corridor. Um, was anyone, I know Meg was there, was anyone else involved in or um, went to a meeting that we had about Grant Avenue? Ray, I think, Steve, yeah, there were a couple of people. Rex, you don't count. Um, <laughs> Rex is at all the meetings. Well, actually, Ray is too. The, um, um, the city has two two major capital improvement projects going on right now in, in this quarter. Um, and we've spent a, a lot of time talking about wanting to look at what we call the south side of the tracks or the south side of the downtown. And what can we do to lift up the, um, the aesthetics um, of, that, of that quarter. And so we're looking at Grant Avenue now from Wellington Road to the railroad tracks to lead to Center Street because that is really part of the downtown. It's not in the historic district, but that is part of our downtown, and what can we do to enhance the landscape and the access and the entrance into the downtown? So along with the public safety facility project, we're looking at Grant Avenue and the four lanes of traffic and saying, you know, there's got to be room for street trees. There's got to be room for some better street lights. Things like you see on the north side of the tracks, when you see the black street lights and some of the beautiful trees that we planted over there, there's got to be room. We know we can find room on the south side. 
So there was a meeting um, about this time last year um, of a number of people. Meg, how many people do you think we had at that meeting? About 67, something like that. Um, talking about Grand Avenue, where they like to walk, where they like to sit, how they get from point A to point B. So we brought the notes from that meeting that I had shown on a, um, that I was going to show, but we have it in the back of the room with the notes from the public of that meeting talking about what they would like to see at the corridor. Um, so as part of this project with beautifying Grant Avenue and then the public safety facility, we want to hear from the folks that are in the room tonight what you would like to see in the corridor, what you would like to see um, enhance that, that area. And so the site is really important. Um, let me talk about this for a minute. I'm going to jump around again, so I apologize. Um, the chief spoke from an operational point of view, um, which is, um, and when I was with the fire chief, they do, you know, they all speak from an operational point of view. I want to speak a little bit from a planning point of view. Um, operationally, the warehouse with the office building on the front works, and it also saves the city and the taxpayer money, but it also, I think, works potentially for the neighborhood, because this backs up to the Georgetown South townhouses, which are about two, three-story townhouses, um, not very high. So by putting the lower building um, with buffer, we will have room for buffer up against Georgetown South. We keep the lower profile building up against, that's Aspen, I think, Meg? I yeah. keep leaning on Meg since I don't know the slide. Um, that's Aspen um, over there. And so that's another way of sort of protecting the neighborhood and the houses. So they're not going to have a four-story building looming over the townhouses. The four-story building is going to be towards the front of the street. The other reason why we want to put the um, four-story, three or four-story building in the front of the street is because of this space right here. We want this to be a special place, and that's something that we want to hear from you all tonight. And we've done a little poster in the back. Chief Clemens, can you raise your hand over here? So right where Chief Clemens is standing, there's a little poster back there, which we call a precedence board. We want this to be a special place. We want it to be a special place for the community, a place where you can sit. Maybe there's a bench, maybe there's a water feature. Um, if you're walking into the downtown, there's shade trees. But we also want it to recognize the, um, our law enforcement, our fire and rescue, all of our public safety personnel for the, the work that they do, the sacrifice that, that they make. And so have a, we don't know what it is yet. Is it a memorial? Is it a park? Is it um, quiet space? Is it active space? So one of the things that we want to hear from you all tonight in Q&A, but also um, after, the, after the formal presentation, we'll be talking about different things. We actually have green and red dots. Um, and you can put a green dot by the picture you like and a red dot by the picture you don't like. That will help us give some thought to what this space should be. And then, so you can start to see with this space and then with enhanced landscaping and trees and, and pretty street lights along Grant, that this starts to really um, become a beautiful place and, and really makes it comfortable. If you've ever walked along the street, if you've gone to the um, shopping center, um, it's hot. We were there today actually um, having pizza over at Joe's Pizza today. And um, she's got some beautiful new picnic tables and red umbrellas out there, which are so comfortable. That makes a huge difference, just having a nice place to sit. Um, so that is something that we that we really want to want to see. So that is really the crux of the presentation. Um, I'm going to invite the chief back up, and we'll answer any questions. But we have different boards. We have Grant Avenue in the back. Carlos, can you wave your hand? Where Carlos is in the back there, we have um, the Grant Avenue. If you want to take a look at that and talk to staff about that. Um, Carlos is also our Spanish translator. If anyone wants to um, have some translation, Carlos can help you with that. Um, we have the precedence on the landscape and the memorial, and we have the designs here. And we'll just open it up. Okay. I want to talk a little bit to, uh, okay. about the renovations that have been done on this building that have helped us uh, meet the requirements that we need today. Um, going back to when Meg and I first started here, they, what were there maybe five females in the department yep. when, you, when you got here? Uh, we didn't need a lot of space, a lot of separate um, divisions and locker rooms. Today, almost 25% of our entire staff are female. That's great diversity, but with the diversity, 
we needed space. So our old gel that we had here uh, was renovated, and that now is a female locker room. Uh, and we took the old female locker room that I think had three lockers in it uh, and expanded the men's locker room because we were overcrowded there. So you can start seeing space starting to disappear in the agency. Our current evidence processing and storage location was changed. We had to renovate that. We had a small photo area and processing area. We had to back that out to expand our evidence location. The city purchased um, rollaway cabinets like you'd see in an office space or an office that collapsed down on each other to expand our storage capacity. Uh, when we spend this money, I think we do a great job of doing it wisely. So when we made those renovations, we made sure that that equipment at $100,000 could be picked up and moved into a new location so it wasn't just money spent on to the side for three to five years. Um, storage location on the other side of the building. This building was designed as an open concept. I can tell you we've made every closet and all the space, Meg shaking her head. She probably was housed in one of the closets at one point. Right, Meg? Yeah. <laughs> uh, we've taken every closet and every space we possibly could and put a wall up to give some privacy for our supervisors to have an office space. Um, not really sure what else we could do. This latest renovation of this room, which served not only as a community room, served as our department training room, served as our emergency operations center, uh, and anything else that we wanted to do, it was done in this room and we've already cut that down as well. We've already knocked out the public meeting space for this because we utilize this for meetings uh, in-house now. So this is really the only open space we have in the police department at all. Yes, ma'am. As a, just as a citizen of Manassas, I have two questions. Sure. Um, what will happen to this place once you move? Do you want us to answer them as you go or get yeah, away? No, no. We're, we're really not sure. There's several things on the table. Renovating it and using it for other city departments. There's also some discussion about giving this to the schools. The schools need an administration building. They need approximately 22,000 square feet is their estimate. This building is just over 22,000 square feet or the city could sell it to a developer. So those are really the three primary things that we've had some discussion to be determined at a later date. And then at this point, what is the new building? How many is it to house uh, in terms of officers and civilian staff? Total with all the departments? Mm -hmm. That's a good question, Meg. I don't know how many oh, IT. I don't know how many okay. people well, IT the has. Department, then. Just the police department. Well, there's about 128.5 right. current personnel. Uh -huh. This is expanded into house approximately 150 people, which we think is appropriate at that point. If you went for the full four stories, that would give you additional space for growth in the future. All right, so 150 takes you till, to what year, maybe? In other words, what I'm, I remember moving in here in 1990, and I remember that very soon thereafter, we were saying we need more space. So we don't want that to happen again. Sure. So as the contractor does it, they have a new way of developing that. They give a certain square footage for each person. Mm -hmm. So that expands the footprint a little bit more. And um, we're hoping that we'll go to... Well, the study takes us out to 2032. But one of the um, one of the decisions point when you saw the, the building massing has sort of a cutaway, do we build out the whole box? Is whether or not how much extra room we want beyond 2032 for if there's any if there's any any. So one of the other things that was taken into consideration, Meg, was how much development in the population would increase for the city of Manassas. Right. As we know, we're almost built out. So what is the prediction for how many new officers? Uh, yeah. 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 I can't break the rule about how many we're yeah. almost built out, but I remember somebody making a similar comment in 2005. Um, Wait, we were almost built out. So yeah, I'm not sure um, we were I'll, um, yeah. I, I have a, I have a, I have a little side bet with with department heads, and, and every every time they say we're almost built out or we're built out, they owe me five bucks um, because cities don't cities don't build out. Um, cities redevelop, they go down, they go up, they change, they never reach this perfect magical. Ooh, look, we're done. Um, it, it never happens. So you owe me five bucks.
I want to keep on uh, Meg's point here. So the 17,000 square feet, is that three and a half stories? That is the footprint. That's, right. that's the footprint. That's the footprint. It's a 17,000 square foot footprint. Oh. As you can see, there's oh. some other lines on here as well. That is if we wanted to go a different dimension, make the footprint smaller and go up higher. So the, the contractor, Dewberry, has given us options for an architect to look at differently of what the footprint and how high we want to go. So some of that depends on the height of the building we want to go and how much space we actually want to go. That's been determined. That is correct. So, so why, minimum, you, why were all your pictures showing three and a half stories? Why? Because that's the estimate that is actually needed in the uh, contract in the assessment. And that three and a half stories will get you satisfy you to 32? Yes, sir. Uh, and how many square feet is that? It is 50, 53, 50, 53, about so 53, three and a half times 17, I think. Right? Well, yeah, then I'm always adding in the building in the back. So. Yeah. Well, no, no, I was just more curious about the building. Yeah. Right. Is the, um, I just, um, this is a conversation. So are the reasons for those questions that you're concerned were under planning or over planning? What's the, what's the concern? Well, the concern is that you have enough room for, for okay. growth. Yeah. Okay. The, the, yeah, that you don't get yeah, over that it. All of a sudden you realize. Okay. Yeah, I was just trying to. Yeah. If we're going to do it, let's right. do it. Let's it's do it and right. make sure you don't. Yeah. So okay. what, it's, it's a great question. This space is pretty limited where we're at, right? right. So that we, select, we, go, we so. only can go up <laughs> and there's only so much parking there. So that's the reason we wanted to make sure that it would take us out to a minimum of 2032 under those conditions. Yes, ma'am. So a couple questions. What is the, the max square footage that you can have in, in this facility? And at the beginning of your presentation, you said that this was one of four that, that made it to the final conversation. Yes. Are, are those other three sites being used by the city at this point, or are any of them larger to give you more capacity? No, they're not being utilized by the city of Manassas. We would also have to pursue what they would cost um, and if they would even house this style of building. So this conceptual drawing and plan was specifically designed for this footprint. So if we chose a different location, you'd have to go back to the drawing board to make it situate on that plot, so to speak. And there, none of those other... Um, properties are currently owned by the city that, that made it to the final? That is correct. For the property and the plot size we need, there was no public property available at that time. And one more question. Do you, do you have a timeline for, for this project? Uh, I have an aggressive time on, <laughs> but I'm Chief happy. would like to break ground tomorrow. Uh -huh. um, <laughs> so realistically, what realistically, is the realistically, we're hoping to go out this fall with bids for the design of the building. These are all very conceptual, mm -hmm. um, what we call massing studies, and as you can see, we're still honing in on specifics on the square footage. The um, um, it usually will take about 12 months to get design and site plan and all that, so construction to start maybe in a year to 18 months. Thank you. It's usually two years for construction, so okay. say three-year project. All right, thank you. Sorry, That's <laughs> get to the bottom line. And um, before I take another question, the full space need study with all the square footage numbers, because you can see the chief and I can't hold numbers in our heads, um, is available on the city's website. It's on the if you go to the police department page and scroll down to the bottom, the space needs study. It's still draft because again, oh, we're, we're still there. You go, Ray has it. Um, it is available on the website, and so the 51 page. If you have trouble printing it, give me a call. I'm happy to print you out a copy. Really? Yes, absolutely. There is a. Are you done, ma'am? Yes. Okay. A uh, question about um, access to the site. Uh, right, it looks like the only access is Grant Avenue. Is there any consideration of, of additional access points like Prince William Street or um, Aspen Place? Well, it does not back up to Prince William Street. We got a stream in there. Yeah. So uh, right now, this is the only egress and ingress locations. Uh, we have had some behind-the-scenes discussions. Do you need another emergency exit point? Uh, I think those discussions would be had 
potentially with the Georgetown South community? What could we do to maybe partner with them to give another egress location? Egress only, emergency access. Mm -hmm. And Georgetown South, and I'm sorry, we keep picking on a few yeah. folks in the room because we, we know um, it's a closed community, we know everybody. Um, but Meg is here from Georgetown South. And one of the things, Meg, that we did look at um, just high level is whether or not an emergency access out only behind to bird as a relief valve, if that would be needed. And that might be something we want to talk to you all about in the future. Two things. Not much. <laughs> not much. <laughs> not much. <laughs> but is there another question back there? I'm, I'm out. Um, let me let me also, if I might elaborate too, because we um, we were out there with the, the consultants. We were out there for about two hours today, just watching traffic and and um, as I mentioned, we had dinner at Joe's at Lamia's place. Um, one thing that we have not done yet is really figured out entrances in and out. We've got the shopping center, Joe's has two frontages, the public safety facility. We don't know if a traffic light will be needed. Um, there's more traffic analysis that needs to be done. And I think the chief didn't say this when he first opened up the, at the meeting, but we've said it in, in other um, venues. This is the very first of several meetings just to kind of start to get the conversation and to hear what the, what the questions are. But definitely the, the traffic and um, entrances and whether or not a traffic light is needed is something that we will be looking at. Our next big community meeting, just so you know timing-wise also, probably will be after the summer holiday in September. And we hope to at least have the traffic questions answered and be able to talk to you all about entrances and traffic lights at that meeting in September. I shouldn't have to ask this question, but I know I do. Um, have, is there any provisions for bicycle parking for visitors at the police station? Yeah. Mm -hmm. We want it to be a very open, community-oriented building. We want people to feel welcome when they get there. We are not looking to make this government structure that looks <coughs> enclosed and no one is welcome. Mm -hmm. So our conception design that Liz and I keep talking about is the importance of the design of this to make it very open and welcoming to our community. Anyone else back there? We'll swing on back to Meg. Okay, Meg, and then we'll come back over. Um, so, this is following uh, the shopping center stuff. It is the Grand Avenue Shopping Center. Grand Avenue Shopping Center. Yeah, and, and uh, thank you for noting that. Um, we've done what we can, and we're going to continue to work on Georgetown South to make it look better. But if you're going to have a really nice looking building out there, is there going to be anything done to get? the other side of the shopping center cleaned up a bit, uh, the asphalted lights, uh, that kind of thing, so that it's on a par aesthetically. Yeah, there's a couple different things. One, there's a great opportunity while we're mobilized to go out and repave that shopping um, that shopping center parking lot. Um, one of the things that we noticed is it's laid out very inefficiently. Um, it could be laid out a lot, a lot more efficiently. Um, the city has both facade and landscape grants that businesses can apply for. Um, Joe's Pizza, La Mia, um, she's walked our designers around it twice <laughs> today. So one of the things that we would like to do is work with the two owners, Joe's Pizza and the shopping center, on facade and landscape improvements. But yes, that's that's something that we want to talk to them about. And Meg, you all have made a great difference in the community. So keep up the good work. We need to fix the steps well, coming down. <laughs> yeah, no, your steps look great. We went up on the hill. Your steps look great. Their steps, not so much. Yeah, you have concrete steps anyway. Yeah. Another question, Meg? No. No? Okay. Um, I know it's too early. This is the first meeting. Is it, is it too early to talk about the inside of the building? What 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 the inside is going to look like? What the needs? What's, um, we can what talk about the, the needs, but as far inside? as... Um, well, community needs, one of the things, I'll address that, um, and the, um, the city manager is here as well, where is he? He's hiding in the very, in the very back. So if I misspeak, he'll be quick to, to grab me. Um, one of the things that we are trying to do with a lot of our public facilities, and it's unfortunately the world that we live in now, is secure them, is, is particularly our public safety, our schools, different types of buildings. Um, and so we're trying to be more strategic about where there's community meetings and where there's community rooms. 
So this facility right now is proposed as a secure facility that doesn't have open community meeting rooms for HOAs and, and that type of thing. It has facilities for the police to have a meeting and to do a public meeting, but not necessarily if the Boy Scouts want to come and just rent a meeting room. Another project that I'm working on is renovations to the city museum and potentially a library. And that's, that's out there. It's, 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 a, it's a little bit um, very, very conceptual. But the thought was that the museum could potentially be the center of community. And that's where, with an expansion to that building, um, the HOAs could rent a community room and have much more open and much more access. So right now, this building, Public, public Works, um, and even portions of City Hall looking to be more secure, um, just because of today's world. Which took question. this room away, and now the only room we have to use is City Hall, and that, that room is so used. But the city does not have enough community community space right now. Like you made it even worse. Mm -hmm. Well, we want to replace. Not a good answer. We want to replace. I'm gonna apologize for that. We want to replace this room with enhanced rooms at the museum. Yeah, that's too. Um, well, this room is still available for another three or four years. Remember, this project is... This room is not available. Oh, 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 oh. We took away this room before. Oh, gotcha, gotcha. I wasn't, I wasn't aware of that. So, yes. So, so we are... Um, and when we talk to folks about the museum itself, we hear that loud and clear, that there's a need for, our, for a community room. Absolutely. Yeah, I can't, I can't disagree with you. To, to back with, uh, when we've had our uh, planning sessions and work sessions with city council, that is one of the things that Liz constantly talks about with city council and the city managers, the public need space and the needs for that. So it, it's something, and it's a conversation we're having and what those needs are and how we plan out for those. If you feel safer with the public safety facility, you're going to be there and Georgetown South, you know, getting better, you're more than welcome to, to come to our community. Your Mondays are all booked up for each other. Yeah, Mondays are. Yeah. Coming on the point. Or you look at the Herbland Institute for the Mathis Avenue study from 2010 that said not just Mathis Avenue strip mall, but the Weems neighborhood and turn the Weems school into a magnet school mm -hmm. and use it as a community center. Mm -hmm. Except that in this area, well, in Virginia, it's very popular is be very sensitive that, oh, that's the schools, and this is the city. And just, wait a minute, it's a community. And if it's for the love of a piece of paper, execute the piece of paper. But that's we have a lot of community space that's sitting empty. That could be. But again, there is the Mathis Avenue study that said that. By the way, I have two things. <laughs> You have two, two things? I have two things. Okay. That was my, spr <laughs> that was my spring bud because that, that one, as you know, Liz, that's always my bone of contention I know. for the last 20 years. Now I know. We have a lot of empty space. We yep. pay for. I, I think my recommendation, mm -hmm. yeah, we just spent all night debating this. Yeah. <laughs> um, take advantage. I can't remember, but at the meeting, my big thing was for the OmniLink stops mm -hmm. is one of my suggestions is is since you're going to be cutting and realigning, is go ahead and make that bus stop up off the street for safety, just uh, like it would be a school bus. Yeah, pull, a pull out, pull, pull out. out, whatever they call it. Yeah, pull up, pull, pull up, pull out. Pull up. Be, that would be a few, right there on the demilitarized zone uh, between where we have white and asphalt at the moment. Uh, uh, second yeah, off, since like, he isn't okay. here, <laughs> since he isn't here, Vice Mayor Harover has, in every conversation, posed former, a question. Former Vice, former Vice former Mayor, Vice Mayor, Mayor Harover. Harover. Sorry, former sorry. Councilman Foreman. Has there been a study to real, very much aware that we have lack of large space to build on? Was there a quick review to say this is the loss of potential economic development and real estate to meet the needs of the city? I'm going to tell you the conversations, Liz will be able to answer that better, I'm going to tell you the conversations that I was involved in. I hear what you're saying, but our desire and vision is that by making this development, it's going to spark some redevelopment and make up the difference of the loss. If we can start to get redevelopment and more economic involvement here, then that will make up the difference 
for the loss of the one building that we did take away, which was the uh, flea market style warehouse. That, now, that's the vision and that's what we're hoping Ray for. Beverage's position is, go ahead and put a fourth or fifth building on there and put the FRS headquarters so that it's a consolidated public safety building like was in the joint CIP idea to begin with. But, well, the fire and rescue could still go in, in, the same in this building, the admin, the yeah. admin. Um, so, and to answer your question, yes, we, we looked at all of that. We looked at, at potential um, loss of, of taxes on that piece of property. Um, we talked to a lot of office and commercial developers, and this is needed in order to spark some enhancements in the corridor. And not just from new developers coming in, but from existing people. And I, I don't think um, I'm telling any secrets, but um, in talking to the owners at Joe Pizza, um, they have plans to renovate their entire business, inside and out, and make it a sit-down restaurant. So they would not be thinking about that without the city's investment. And so it's not just the big developer potentially coming in and redeveloping, but it's also these business owners, these property owners, um, enhancing their businesses. So we're that's something that we're very excited about. That yeah. folks like Joe's Pizza will will, will feel that that's, this is something they want to invest into their businesses because the city's investing into this, this area. Yeah. An exciting thing today, Ray, talking to Joe's Pizza, and I get excited about this because I've known the family for 30 okay. years. Third generation taking over Joe's Pizza. Yeah. So during my tenure, potentially third generation taking over that staying here in the city of Manassas that's always been a great partner to our community. Great family. Ben and J.E. Rice lately, the fourth, fourth generation. Yes, 80 mm -hmm. years. 80 years. Um, yeah, well, well, thanks for that because the other factor is, and, I, and there's been other conversations with other people, is the, uh, the salt box housing. That's what they're those coming down Grant Avenue. Thank you, Chief. Those are called those little Cape Cod salt boxes, mm -hmm. all part of the that area is redevelopment of that. But every time I interject that, I say, let us remind that redevelopment does not necessarily mean destroying the affordable housing factor. Mm -hmm. One of um, and to that point, Ray, we um, we have another project where we're looking at housing in general, not just affordable housing, but housing in general on that whole south side um, area. So um, the railroad tracks, or Prince William Street rather, to Wellington, Georgetown South, to Fairview Avenue, and looking at all of those neighborhoods and what the price points are, um, what the condition of that housing stock is, what we need to shore up, what has outlived its useful life. There's a couple of those salt boxes that, frankly, um, are not quite habitable. So um, can those be redeveloped? But no, affordable housing and, and maintaining, um, um, you want to enhance the community. And again, I can't go back to the Joe's Pizzas enough. We, we want those folks to be able to enjoy these, these enhancements. Yeah, I know, so. I know the, 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 those couple of those salt boxes that you're talking about, mm -hmm. only because it has termite dynamo. Oh, okay. <laughs> Ray, we got some other people with questions. Do you have another question That's or a point? It. Or that was it? Okay. Um, let's see. This hand was up first, and then we'll go into the back. Oh. So. Thank you. Let me take a Let's try to get my head around the numbers. So $20,500,000 is the price of... Okay. I, well, let me first one thing. I'm trying to get your head around the numbers. I do not want you to get hung up on the numbers tonight. Okay. Okay. Well, I'm, I'm wondering about is this, is that is that that's for the complete building? Right? That's for the complete building, but I'll tell you, I'm I'm a little bit nervous on that budget because I don't think there's enough in it for certain uh, certain things. It, that's why I don't it, want you to get too hung up on the numbers. Is it three and a half stories? Is that a three and a half story? That's a three. I think that one is. A, I think the twenty million is around that three and a half. Okay, that's huh? all right. Yeah, it's just just rough. Yeah, you will. If you go in and look at the study, you will notice it has draft on it. So, um, and if anyone's a numbers geek and wants to sit down and help us with the numbers, I'd be happy to talk to you. Okay, in the back. Yeah, a um, couple of questions uh -huh. about traffic. Has, has the study looked at the accessibility of this site versus the current site, uh, or the new site on Grant Avenue versus Fairview Avenue in terms of access to the city? And how much additional traffic on Grant Avenue would the uh, public safety facility generate? We have... Oh, yeah. <laughs> we're going to make Steve Burke answer that 
Um, that's not very fair. Um, <laughs> no, is we, I think we are, we're in the process of, of looking at that, but it's, it, the facility itself is not anticipated to be that large of a, a generator. Mm -hmm. traffic. Yes, we'll have shifts that are coming in and out, sure. and and some some public uh, folks from the public coming in. But it, 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 it won't be the, the traffic generator that a, a shopping center is or a sure. sit-down restaurant. So from that perspective, we don't, we're not anticipating this being a, a driving force of any needs or anything. But like Liz said, we are in the process of gathering some, some traffic count information so that we can evaluate if there is a need for a traffic signal to, to help moderate access. Well, as far as, as um, the new site being um, uh, better a location for police responsiveness in the current site, or about the same, or worse, or, or what? Two, two things. Uh, council and municipal paint hear this from me all the time. That does not concern me that much, because my staff hears all the time, you need to be out in the community, not at the police station. If you're at the police station, you're not out doing what we need you to do, being involved in the community and doing crime prevention. So get in the community. They hear that more than they ever want to mm -hmm. from me. So I don't really take a lot of validity from that point. Mm -hmm. uh, but as far as being centrally located, remember it's right on Grant Avenue. <clears throat> Excuse me. Within three blocks, you're going to be on 28 South Wellington Road, Hastings. It's actually a better location. We are centered mm -hmm. right in the middle of a two-lane road and actually in a residential community right here. That this was my impression. The, yeah, this is not the yeah. best location uh, where we're at now. That is a much better centralized location for us. Thank you. Other questions? No? Okay, if not, um, we're going to do something at the end that we normally do in the beginning, um, and that is recognize our officials in the room. Um, and I believe starting with Vice Mayor Mark Abaney is right here. Uh, Council Member Pam Sebesky. Council Member Bass. We have Council Member Ian Lovejoy is with us tonight. Any other council members? I think that might be it for electives. We do have our city manager who I spoke about earlier, and he didn't yell at me tonight so far, so that's a good night for me. <laughs> so now, yeah, so now, exactly. And then our deputy city manager, Brian Foster, is also with us tonight. So we're going to stick around. Um, like I said, we've got some green and red dots over there. Our fire chief is here as well. The chief and I are going to stick around, our public works director. There's some cookies, there's some water, so um, let's have some conversation. Thanks. Thanks for coming out tonight. Oh, yeah. If you didn't